He came to teach mankind justice, to show whatever he brought. It was so uh, revolutionary. It was radical at that time and still today is very radical. Why is this radical? Because at that time, he's saying, what? Arabs and Ajam, Arab and non-Arabs, they are equal? They are no higher than one another? No. Arabs are higher. It says, no Arab is higher than an Ajam, no Ajam is higher than an Arab except for Taqwa. That's still very radical today. After even over 1,000 years, 1,400, almost 1,500 years of Islam, you see, you can do and do and do and do and do and do and do all your life. If you forget it one time, you will pay for it. You drive well, you drive well, you drive well, you drive well, you drive, you never have any accident, you never sleep, you know, you're always watching. One day you sleep. After 40 years, you'll get an accident. Then you have to pay for it. This is the law of this world. So we did. We had our civilization was going higher and higher and higher and higher. But when it fell and it slipped and there was betrayal, then we forget we're still paying for that. As our Sheikh is saying, this Ummat, this Ummat, we are under punishment. We are paying for the betrayal that we did to Sultan Abdul Aziz. He says, wait, Shaivan is saying, wait until the revenge of what we had done to Sultan Abdul Hamid comes to the nation. That's going to be very heavy. <coughs> so there. We must not forget. We must remember. We must always be sitting around with the people who remember. Because man who forgets, he will not have any pleasure. He will not have any meaning. He, if you forget, you will not have any pleasure, no meaning, no life. That's why people who wake up and they forget themselves, they forget their names, they forget there is no meaning. Nobody takes them as a complete human being too. No one can trust them and it is a very sad, very depressing situation. If you forget, and Allah is saying, be with the Ahli Zikr. The Ahli Zikr, who are they? The people who remember, the people who make the Zikr. Be with them. Allah is saying, ask them, serve them, be with them. It is important because this dunya is our desires, our ego and shaitan is designed to make us to forget Allah. Must never forget this. The dunya is not here to make us to remember Allah. When I say the dunya also, don't think, why are you being busy? Why are you poking people? Hmm? Tell stuff, Allah. This dunya I don't mean the trees and the birds and the, and the, you're still being very busy, huh? Wait, wait, wait. Interrupting Sohbat again. 24 hours. Okay. I don't mean the nature and everything, which Allah is mentioning this nature, correct? <coughs> so many times in the Holy Quran. Mentioning this nature, mentioning the seas and the sun and the stars and the even the animals is mentioning it to make man to remember the creator of this nature. This dunya, when we're speaking, what the dunya is, is what we make of this world, not what this world is made for us, because everywhere you turn, this nature is going to point to Allah, pointing to the oneness of Allah. Everything points to the oneness of Allah. But when you start thinking that this nature is for you to use, you are the Lord, not that this nature has a Lord, has a higher power. You have the power over this nature. You must uh, 
overpower this nature, you must use it, you must squeeze it, you must destroy it. That's the time this nature, this world, this dunya, is an enemy to you. It's what we do. Again, it is mankind. But everywhere is reminding us. So all those are designed to make us to forget. But although Allah has sent us to be surrounded by these enemies, He is never leaving us alone. He is saying, I am closer to you than your jugular vein. I continuously sent your prophets to you. That even if your prophet had left, the spiritual power is still reaching out to you. Although he had left, he still has inheritors. He still has the successors. There's the companions, there's holy people. They're the angels and the other unseen ones that are servants to Allah that will always make you to point your way back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why man? How man can forget? How man can forget when there are so many reminders? He forgets when he thinks that he is Lord. When he thinks that I am Lord, I am the most powerful, I am the center of all things. And when a little bit of power is given to him, then he gets drunk. Um, so, it's Juma day. We are thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he has pulled us out from the confusion of this Ahir Zaman where Islam is nothing but a name. It's not a reality anymore, like what we say. You know. The Juma, it is an Eid. It is a Bayram. It is a day that the believers, they find rest. It is more holy than the two Bayrams, the two Eids combined. And it has always been like that for over 1,000 years. Whole empires, they would shut down. They would obey this because they understand this is something very, very, very valuable, very important. They didn't say, well, this is just Sunnah. It's not worship. It's not Fars. Last I checked, the group that is going to be entering into the paradise, the group that is going to be in the right way, the group that is in Siratul Mustaqim, last I check is Ahli Sunnat or Jamaat, is not Ahli Fars or Jamaat. Now the Ahli Sunnat people are saying, that's just Sunnat, you don't have to, this is Fars you have to do. So you even have people, they come in, there's time to pray Sunnat, and I'm watching, and I'm speaking personally and openly, people are going to get very upset with me, it's okay. This is what <laughs> I'm witnessing. I'm witnessing when I grew up in Shafi's. Because it's very good, a lot of things today, I'm not talking about Imam Shafi, I'm not talking about the alims or the ulamas, but people who are following. Today, when it's off balance, and the prayers that they make and everything is very tight, it's very compact, it's, it's very disciplined, it's, they did everything, it's more complete, it's more difficult in some ways than let's say the other mezhabs, let's just say it like that. But because of that, it is also a little bit more heavy. Hmm? So for instance, to make the niyat in the Shafi way, we have to memorize what the niyat is, the intention in Arabic, properly, and we have to Say it before we pray, literally, we have to say it, I intend to pray. And then we say Allahu Akbar, when we pull the Allahu Akbar, we have to uh, make everything to disappear, only Allahu Akbar, and then to put it down. If you say Allahu Akbar and it's still some thought coming to you, you put down your hand, you try it again, and again, and again, and again, until you say Allahu Akbar, then you put your hands down. Same way, when you're standing up, it's like this. You must put your hand like this. When you're sitting down for the first tahiyat, it's like this. Your leg second tahiyat, is like this. Which toe that you're supposed to bend, which is very specific. It's all according to sunnah. It's very good. But when it becomes just about the form, it becomes very heavy. And when people are very weak, and what you want to give them is the spirit, 
but you are concentrating on the form, people are going to back away because people are very weak now. So you have people coming in, there's time for sunnah, they don't pray sunnah. They say, why I pray sunnah? It's just sunnah. But far as they pray, Allah Akbar, pray properly. Salah, and they pray very properly, they have to recite everything point by point. Very khushu, but after that, everyone just disappears. We've seen that, correct? It's different with, let's say, the Hanafi Mazhab. You're praying sunnat after sunnat after sunnat. There's no, no end to the sunnats, especially in the Naqshbandi way. Also looking at the weakness of people. Now, we pray with energy. We don't pray with uh, weakness and slowness. Hmm? Then you have more energy to pray. Now, how you're following Shaf, and how funny it is now to pray Fajr without praying two rakat sunnat. How funny it is now to pray Zuhur, at least not to pray after the Sunnah after. How weird it is to pray Isha and not to pray Witir. How weird it is. But for s millions of people, it's not weird at all. In fact, they don't want to because it's, it's, it's Sunnah, it's not fast. They don't mean anything bad by it. But what happens now, it becomes weaker. Because the Fars is there, the Fars is protected by another wall. And that wall is the wajib. The wajib is protected by another wall, and that is a sunnah. It gets protected and protected and protected. And the ahli sunnah way, it is holding on and protecting the way of the Prophet. Because people have all sorts of ideas, you know. All sorts of ideas, all sorts of improvements they think they want to improve. Don't think it is only now in the ahir zaman people have weird ideas. They've been having weird ideas about Islam since the beginning, since the time of the Prophet ﷺ. In the hundred years, two hundred years, three hundred years especially, after the Prophet passed ﷺ, everyone had so many weird ideas to put in. But instead of the believers now following the way of the Prophet in the Sahabi Kiram, cracking, 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 Splitting, 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 becoming more and more and more and more sectarian as the Shias are doing up till today. You see it becoming more and more and more and more solid and more solidified. It's not cracking open, it's becoming more solid. There was a time when there were hundreds of mezhab because every Sahabi was a mezhab. Every Sahabi was a way. The Prophet ﷺ is saying, my companions, they're like stars in the sky. Whichever one that you follow, it will lead you to me, the Prophet was saying. That's why he sent one Sahabi to China, for example. Yes, there were Sahabis buried in China. He sent some to India. He sent some to different areas. He sent some even all the way they're finding now in North America. They're finding now all the way in uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, 1400 years ago, the Sahabis, 124,000 of them, where did they all disappear after the Prophet passed? They are given different work, different jobs to do. They were not looking at each other to say, I want your job or this. No, they were looking to what their job is and they were running after that job. They don't say, I want something else, this one is more, this, no. They went and they went everywhere where they went and they went there, they passed and they buried there. And because of the blessings of that Sahabi in that land, 100 years, 200 years, 500 years, even 1,000 years later, that seed starts growing and Islam then starts spreading. Otherwise, it is impossible. So every Sahabi now was a mezhab. There were hundreds, but it became more and more and more solidified instead of splitting. Because the people, it is this religion is protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were keeping things valuable. We are talking about Juma. Just this one, one sunnah. And there are millions of sunnahs. That even the munafiks, the hypocrites in the time of the Khalifa, will not break. No munafik 
in the time of the Khalifa would even think to shave their beard. A man. They will not. They will not. There was a story of a man who was traveling and he was passing across one Muslim land and he went and he stayed in a, uh, let's say an inn. How you say an inn in Islam? Like a, a han. No. A han. Yeah, caravan sarai, but a han. So it is known that the innkeeper was a munafik. You know why he was a munafik? Because mm, he, didn't, he doesn't go to the masjid to pray Isha and he doesn't go to the masjid to pray Fajr together. You understand there are so many signs now. Because in the old days, not so old, 100 years ago, and at most 200 years ago, it's not even. Huh? It is unthinkable if Muslims are living in one village, in one town, that they don't come together at least once a day, all the men especially, to gather in the jami, to pray Isha together and to pray Fajr together. And a day like Juma, like this, they stop work whole day now. From Thursday night, they gather for Zikr. They relax a little bit, worship. Next morning, they all come and they pray together. And the whole day until Juma time, they are sitting around, talking to each other, speaking to each other, enjoying each other's company, understanding what is happening. They pray Juma and then they spend the rest of the time with their family. This is how you keep a community. No? This is how you keep a nation together. They were doing that. And that man was known as a Munafik because he wasn't doing that. Now compare ourselves to that. Where is the emphasis by the religious leaders and the uh, officials of every Muslim country. They are even embarrassed to bring this up. But that man, understand this, how munafik he was, this person was pretending to become a Muslim. So there are certain things that he doesn't know. He knows Quran, he was a Hafiz. Yes, you can memorize the Quran and still be an unbeliever. You can still memorize hadith. It's not uh, difficult. I will tell you another story later. It's not for this camera. So, and so this person came and is dressed like an Ottoman scholar, so they give him a lot of importance. And then the next morning, the innkeeper went and knocked on his door saying, I'm here for the blessings. You're a scholar, you're an alim. Let's pray together. And this man is an imposter, you know. So it's like, okay, let's pray together. I know everything. So he did everything. But he seems this man is so full of energy with him. This man who is called a munafik. <laughs> he had to recite everything, he said. Do all the sunnats, you know, like how we're doing like this. Reciting Yasin and the Ismail Husna and everything. He had to do that. Then... The man says, well, I just came last night, I'm tired, I'm going to rest a little bit. And this Munafik innkeeper said, are you crazy, my brother? You're going to sleep now? Now? It's Ishraq time. You're going to sleep before Ishraq? You're not going to be awake? Are you normal? Are you okay? Nobody ever does that. How far away are we from Islam as a lifestyle? What are we taught? What is our emphasis now? The man had to stay up. Because just to stay up for Ishraq, it is as if you had gone to the Hajj and your Hajj is accepted and you're coming back. You understand? And in this Ahir Zaman, it is as if, especially like what we're doing at least by force, I'm making you do it once a week, everyone. Huh? But those who are living here, you're doing it every day. Good. Which by far, as I'm saying, after, ish, after Fajr, you're going to eat. You're going to have breakfast. Because if not, everyone's just going to, this is how our ego is in this Ahir Zaman. We are all weak. I understand that. So the law is there to protect us and to push us to higher stations. It's not there to punish us. Now, if we do that one sunnah, now it is as if a hundred martyrs did that. It is as if a sahabi did that. 
and we're collecting it. So easy. This is the good news you're supposed to give to people. This is the good news. That don't despair Allah's mercy on you when you're taking one step in the way of Allah. The good news is not to say, don't take any steps in the way of Allah, Allah will forgive you. The good news is not to say, even if you step backwards all the time, all the way, and you are cruel, you're a tyrant, you don't acknowledge Allah, you don't worship, you don't do anything, but Allah will still forgive you. That is not the good news, that's lying. This is the good news, that to the weak believers now, if you do a small thing, Allah loves it. So it gives you more energy to do more and more, to become better. We're taking everything backwards now. So one thing, the Juma, they were keeping it very holy. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. We are here as a small community. It's okay, it's good. Small community that we're able to carry this. Pull yourself away. Escape. This is a very big blessing in this practice that you'll go to anywhere in this world also. You'll not get the same kind of spirit. Because now what they have put into Muslims' hearts, even those ones who are sincere and those ones who are poor, they have placed in their hearts also a great longing for the dunya. And that's very dangerous. And we're living here where everything is provided and we're pulling ourselves out from that dunya. We are not jealous and we are not envious and we are not drunk with what the dunya has to offer. We've tasted it and we say, Alhamdulillah, we're satisfied with this. Hmm? Inshallah, may Allah always make us to be the ones to keep the Juma holy and to be with the Ahli Zikr and to be grateful ones and to be those ones who are asking for forgiveness, inshallah. Wa min Allahu tafiq al-Fatiha. Okay.